I'm with Pierre Holmick at the IOC Advanced Team Physician course in Oslo. And Pierre, you're one of the leaders in trying to address groin pain and solve this difficult problem. And you just gave a presentation and you made a couple of key points about better diagnosis. Yes, it's uh, very important that we uh, move on uh, within the field of, of groin problems uh, to establish some diagnoses that are built on uh, reproducible and validated examination techniques, uh, imaging, and a better and deeper understanding of what is actually the cause of the groin problems. And what do you see as the three or four main entities that actually present to clinicians? I think at the stage now uh, in the research and the knowledge about groin injuries, uh, we are in only a very few cases able to establish uh, a, a diagnosis in the classical sense. This means that we instead have to work with a, another concept and we have suggested to work with uh, clinical entities. And the main clinical entities that we, <coughs> sorry, that we suggest that we work with are uh, a doctor-related, iliopsoas-related and inguinal-related uh, groin pain. That is, they are related to an anatomical structure that when we test it uh, functionally or we palpate uh, this structure, then we can see that uh, then the patient will have pain that he knows is the same pain as the pain that he has when he's doing his sport meaning that we can relate the patient's complaints and, and the pain to an anatomical structure. Doing that, we can put all the possible diagnoses for, for instance, a doctor-related pain in one box. And we can, put the, we can sort of identify the patient with this kind of problems. From there, we have to develop. And we have to do that together. But to do it, I think it's very important that we both clinically and scientifically use these entities in our papers, in our daily work, so that we can, we, we can compare what we're doing and we, we know that we're talking about the same type of patients. And then if a clinician's deciding how much to investigate one of these patients, um, what's some direction there? I know it's a, it's a complicated issue, but what advice would you have in terms of knowing how aggressively to investigate these entities? Well, I, I think it's, it's very important that you, let's say, um, you want to do a study on uh, treatment for, uh, for instance, uh, iliopsoas related problems. So to do that, you have to identify uh, the patient with pain related to that muscle. So you have to go to the literature, see how it's devi defined, and then identify the patients and make very clear inclusion exclusion criteria, make sure that iliopsoas is an important uh, factor in this patient's groin pain. There might be other problems as well. Uh, there might be a FAI hip problem, there might be an adductor related problem. You have to, of course, relate to that as well. But you should identify them and put them into the clinical entities so that you know what you're working with. If you're just working with groin patients, like uh, pubaltia, using that term for instance, it would be the same as taking a knee patient with a meniscal injury, a uh, football player, and call it knee algae or knee pain syndrome, athletic knee pain syndrome, or something else like that. Nobody would accept that today. We need to get the groin issue to the same level as, uh, for instance, the knee is uh, in these days. Fantastic. And just to finish up, um, you have developed a very quick, efficient scoring system that helps to put this on a scientific basis, clinically as well as for research. Tell us about the HAGOS, and then we'll direct readers to other sources. Yeah, uh, the Copenhagen Hip and Groin Outcome Score, uh, short HAGUS, is uh, a score that uh, Christian Torborg has developed as part of his PhD. And it's uh, done by, uh, by the book uh, using the Cosman uh, recommendations on how to do outcome scores, patient-based outcome scores. And we've published that uh, last year in British Journal of Sports Medicine. I think it's a, it's a good score and we have some very good experience with it now. And it's uh, currently being translated to a lot of languages all over the world. Um, and hopefully it will be used both in the area of, of groin pain, uh, the soft tissue groin pain, but it's absolutely also developed for uh, hip atroscopy, for hip uh, entities. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it has uh, all the qualities uh, to be used in, in both categories. And I actually think that both uh, the people dealing with soft tissue problems and uh, the clinicians dealing with uh, hip joint problems, they need to know each other's areas. 
and it would be very good for them to use the same score because the complications that the hip surgeons see after arthroscopy are very often soft tissue problems. And when we have soft tissue patients that are not responding to our treatment as we would expect, it could very well be that there's a problem in the hip joint that they need to address. So it is overlapping and I think uh, in time we, we need to sort of uh, combine these more and more and then it would also be very good to have a score that covers both and we think the Hagers is, is excellent for that. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Pear. You've been listening to Pear Holmick, who's a very well respected name in the field, has fantastic publications and is a popular keynote speaker. We're here in Oslo and uh, you can follow other information in terms of addressing your patients with hip pain and groin pain by following the links related to this clip. <laughs>